the solutions can be organized, one way to do it is not the standard way, is with uh, plotting n here and l here, and you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and you have all these points. Remember, every point is allowed. Every integer combination is allowed. All those are energy levels of the hydrogen atom. But now you can see that this point, when both are 0, corresponds to n equals to 1. Because if n and l are 0, n is equal to 1. And there's just one solution with n equals to 1. These two points here, when l is equal to 1 and n equals 0, or when n is equal to 1 and l equals 0, represent the two possibilities that realize n equals to 2. n equals to 2 is realized by having 1 and 0, or 1 and 0, two values. Similarly, there are three things with n equals to 3. Four things, oh, my graph is not that great, with n equal to 4, and more and more states. So for each n, each n, you have that n plus l is equal to n minus 1. And L can never exceed n minus 1. And that's physically quite uh, something that people remember. Uh, but also n cannot exceed n minus 1 or 0. Both are there, limited by these quantities. So uh, if you have some n, you will have l and n, for example, for some quantum number n. You will have l equals 0, and n would be n minus 1. That would work out l plus n would be n minus 1, or 1 and n minus 2, or all the things up to n minus 1 and 0. So they take turns. They have to add up to n minus 1. So let's plot. Uh, let's actually, um, we can go here. You don't have too much more to say at this moment, so let's. Let's have this. We can do a little counting that it's interesting. And uh, count the number of states for a given n. So for example, for n equals to 1, what can we have? We said l equals 0, and capital N is equal to 0 as well. And that's one state for n equals to 2. What can you have? n equals to 2. You could have l equals 1 or l equals 0. So l equals 1 or l equals 0. And how many states do we have here? Well, L equal 1 can have M equals 1, 0, and minus 1. Remember, the M value is another label for states. Those are different states. So here there are three states plus one state, three plus one states. That's four. N equals 3 will have L equals 2, L equals 1, and L equals 0, which is five states plus three states plus one state, which is nine states. And that's uh, three squared. And four was actually 
2 squared, and if you go on to n, you will have n squared states, something that perhaps you could try to count and show that that's true. So what, our, what are our quantum numbers for the states of hydrogen? Well, our quantum numbers are, it's our choice, but physically we want to understand them each intuitively. So here we go. One most important quantum number, and its name says so, is principal quantum number. So the quantum numbers, quantum numbers, numbers of hydrogen. And the first important thing is n. We definitely cannot do away with n. It fixes our energies. And now we have a possibility. We look at this and we say, yeah, well, actually, I either need to determine what is L or what is N. So it, it doesn't even come close. A physicist will not say, oh, I want to describe the quantum number by the degree of the polynomial inside the solution. No, physicists will say, I want to use the angular momentum. And certainly, if you know L and you know N, you know capital N. So capital N is a funny number. has to do with the degree of the polynomial that shows up in between this leading behavior and that exponential behavior. Very interesting, but not directly physical. The L, however, is directly associated to an observable angular momentum. So to describe the state that I have here, if I give you N and L, you can see that you determine which state you are. So the second quantum number is going to be L. And the third quantum number is unavoidable. It's the Z component of angular momentum, should be M. That's also physical, and we should not uh, skip it. So these are our quantum numbers, and they fix capital N, in case you're interested, as N minus L plus 1. And that's interesting information. So uh, let's recall our variables. Ooh, OK, rho is here. That's very nice. Uh, so uh, rho is uh, 2 kappa z over a naught R, but now we know what kappa is. Kappa is 1 over 2n. So actually, the rho variable is uh, tailored to the quantum numbers. It's just z r over n a naught, where n is the principal quantum number. So back to the solution. You see, we have to recap, recap quickly. Um, Psi NLM is equal to U of the energy of the radial equation. So it, N and L is sufficient for that over R YLM. Or the U is the thing that we had here, UL, and now it has an energy as, into it. So it's a rho to the L plus 1. Still, R and rho up to number, so this is like uh, a rho, a W N L, if we wish, of rho, e to the minus rho, and Y L M, theta phi. So. Well, let's write one more equation and finish. So 
just to give the feeling of the solution, what, what does that give you? Um, rho to the L, a polynomial of rho, which is a polynomial of degree n, n, which is uh, n, little n minus L plus 1, times e to the minus rho ylm. It's important for you to see the whole solution. This is the whole solution of the hydrogen atom. I'll write it in one more way. A, a constant, because this is similar. Rho, well, rho is, in terms of units, at least has r to the over a naught to the l. Here it is, a polynomial. You know, in r over a naught of degree little n minus l plus 1. And this polynomial, we could make a whole study of it. These are Laguerre polynomials. Uh, we will not look into them uh, in this course. You may do it in a more advanced course. It, it's interesting, but uh, it's better to just get an intuition as to what's happening here. There is an e to the minus rho, which is interesting to have fully. So this is e to the minus z r over n a naught. And there is a ylm of theta and phi. So this is your whole solution for the hydrogen atom. Um, we should write the simplest one, psi 1, 0, 0, n equal 1, l equal 0, m equal 0, spherically symmetric. Here it is, 1 over pi a cubed e to the minus r over a naught for the case z is equal to 1. Ground state of hydrogen. 